the lesson today will be on the fabric properties because the first part of it would be the geometrical properties where we would test all the basic properties which will definitely influence the fabric. So, testing is a valuable aid for the textile production, for the distribution and the consumption. So, when we know there are certain problems, we can test the problems and so that we will understand the shortcomings of the properties in them and as well as the post manufacture behavior. If we can know the defects earlier, it will be a possible to rectify them at the appropriate time because sometimes when the defects exceed a particular percentage, then altogether the fabric is rejected in the industry because they would create a lot of problems in the assembly of the garment. So, to identify the impact of bow and skewness in the fabrics and to evaluate them, to comprehend the effect of moisture, to understand what is the importance of dimensional stability and to estimate the amount the moisture content and the dimensional stability in the textiles. So, the first problem we generally come across is the bow and the skewness, where it is a very simple problem because we know that the fabric contains two sets of yarns, the warp yarns and the weft yarns, which are interlaced at right angles to each other. Now, if this right angle would not occur, then the defects would occur and the common defect we come across when the yarns are not at right angles to each other, we see the bowing and the skewness in the fabric. We call a defect to be a bow when the filling yarn in the middle of the fabric is sometimes ahead or behind the sides of the fabric. And the skew would be the defect when it occurs when the filling yarn is at an angle other than 90 degrees angle to the warp. Now, ASTM has defined bow and skewness. So, according to them bow is a fabric condition that results when filling yarns or the knitted courses are displaced from a line perpendicular to the selvage and form one or more arcs across the width of the fabric. And coming to skewness, it is also a condition resulting when the filling yarn or a knitted course are angularly displaced from a line perpendicular to the edge or sides of the fabric. In fact, skewness is also called as a bias and both these defects would occur just because these yarns are not at right angles to each other. Now, there are certain problems that are associated with bow and skewness. The first problem that occurs would be because the manufacturing process itself would be slightly defective, the problems would affect and in warping, weaving, finishing all this process there is every chance for the bow and the skewness to result. In weaving, we mostly see because there is a variation in the tension of the width of the warp beam, the skewness occurs when there is an uneven let off or take up speeds on the loom. This unequal tension will be seen sometimes on one side or sometimes on both the sides. And generally, the problems or the defects would occur greatly in the finishing aspect where fabric dyeing, sometimes tentering and other operations would take place. So, wherever there is a potential uneven distribution of tensions across the fabric, we generally come across with the bow and the skewness problems. In finishing, skewness is greatly uh, seen where on the tentering frame or we call a tentering frame, where the wet fabric is chained on both the sides of the mesh. So, here when the attachment of the fabric is done in such a way that one side of it is attached pulled off 90 degrees or when the chains on the machine would move at a different speed, the skewness would reflect. In fact, both bow and skewness are very displeasing visually and it is more apt or seen in colored fabrics and in patterned fabrics, it is very prominently seen in case of plaids and stripes. So, when such problem occurs, it would be very difficult to match them when we are matching the fabrics while the sewing either by the home sewer or even the manufacturer. Now, there are certain difficulties that arise because of skewness where the tailoring or the sewing aspects where we convert the 2D fabric into a 3D or 3 dimensional forming, where when the garments are made with a fabric of having a defect of skewness, they behave very differently on each part of the body and sometimes it loses the shape in fact. Both bow and skewness they create some twist in the garments in the laundering where the leg of a pair of jeans or the sleeve, the long sleeve on a shirt would change 
and especially on small parts like the collars, cuffs, this both these defects are to be very detrimental. In fact, it is assumed by the manufacturers that bow is the maximum or one among the top 10 problems that they occur in the industry. So now, let us see about the method of measuring these bow and skewness defects in a fabric. Now, the first one would be the filling bow. So, for this we require small tools like a measuring stick or some steel tape, one rigid straight hedge and which is longer than the width of the fabric and of course, a flat surface. Now, on this the first thing is we have to take a fabric where there is a defect, lay it very flat on a flat surface without any tension. Now, either with a pencil or with a fabric marker, we have to trace one filling yarn where there is a deviation which we find. Generally, there are about three places where we are supposed to do the testing which are very widely spaced and take a average of, of these readings. And once the tracing is done, now we have to place the straight edge across the fabric in a way connecting the two points of the traced yarn where it is meeting the edges of the fabric. Now, the measurement has to be done so accurately that it has to be measured to 1 mm and the distance between these two would be the baseline. Now, when the measure is to be done, the distance between the baseline to the deviation of this filling or the bow has to be made which is supposed to be called as a bow uh, distance or the D. Now, when we take the percentage of this, it is 100 into the measure of the bow by the baseline which gives the percentage. In fact, all the fabrics before testing have to be conditioned and only then they have to be tested. So, if it is long bolts, you can still make more number of uh, places to be measured wherein you get an average of maybe 5 to 10 readings also can be done. Now, coming to skewness. So, as we have already seen, it is a distance parallel to and along the selvage between the point at which the filling yarn meets one selvage and a perpendicular from the point at which the same filling yarn meets the other selvage is the measure of the skewness. Now, for this, we require the same tools as what we have seen earlier. And here also, we will be measuring at least in three places according to the, I mean, along the length of the fabric and the fabric has to be placed flat. Now, tracing has to be done of this one filling yarn and then here we have to either see whether it has a right hand skew or a left hand skew. Now, we have to place the rigid straight edge perpendicular to the selvage so that it coincides with the marked yarn at one of the edges. Now, we have to measure this to 1 mm and this would be the width denoted by W. And now, we have to measure the distance parallel to selvage between straightened edge and traced yarn along with the direction of the skew, either it can be a z skew or a s skew. And also, we have to note that whether it is on the face of the fabric or on the back of the fabric. Now, from this we can understand about the percentage skew, either right hand skew or the left hand skew. Now, the next part would be about the moisture content in textile materials. Fibers are present, especially the natural fibers which are hygroscopic in nature, they take up moisture from the air that is present. This is because in the amorphous region of the fiber, we have the free polar groups like OH and COOH which interact with the water molecule and these free groups act like hooks to the water molecules forming into the hydrogen bonds and thereby they have a very good bonding with the water molecule and thereby it absorbs. And it is not that all the fibers would absorb the moisture from the air, there are hydrophobic fibers which do not absorb the moisture. Even the hydrophilic fibers also, when they take up the moisture from the air, they can also give up the moisture in a dry atmosphere which we call it as desorption. And generally, it is understood that about 40 percent of moisture can be retained by the textiles which would definitely act on the mass of the material. So, for this the merchandiser as well as the person in the industry should understand what is the moisture content present in that before purchasing the material because it has an effect on the mass of the material. Now, what are the properties that are affected by the moisture? Now, almost all the physical properties are affected. 
first thing is there is a dimensional change in the fabric because as moisture is absorbed into the amorphous region swelling would take place and this swelling increases with the increase in the moisture. So, because of this swelling there is a change in the width of the fabric, the shape of the fabric, in fact the size of the fabric and sometimes to the stiffness and permeability of the yarns and the fabric. And this aspect of textiles is considered as an advantageous way wherein we want to produce the waterproof fabric so that these fibers which will swell would cover the area making the fabric waterproof. And when fabric swells almost all the dimensions would change in the fabric. And coming to the mechanical properties especially the fictional properties would be affected by the moisture and especially these behavior of the fibers in the processing also is considered. And the general effect is the water molecules which are absorbed will reduce the size of forces that are holding the molecular chains together and thereby there is a weakness that is observed in the fabric. And not all fabrics in fact would be losing their uh, strength. We have seen that especially wool and viscose are the two fibers which would lose their strength when water is absorbed. And on the other side we have the cotton, flax, hemp, jute where there is a gain in strength when the fabric uh, absorbs the moisture. And in fact the extensibility also would be increased in these fibers or the fabrics and also the moisture content in these fabrics would affect the tearing strength of the fabric. Now the third property is electrical property on which the moisture would act because based on the electrical properties the static buildup is present. So when the static buildup is present there are lots of problems that are uh, perceived by the consumers and so whenever there is a a damp condition we can see that there is a low static buildup. Now there are certain factors that absorption of moisture in the textiles would take place and the first thing is absorption is the affinity towards the water. So higher the RH or the relative humidity in the atmosphere automatically there is a higher regain in the textiles and of course to reach the equilibrium in the atmosphere there is an amount of time that is required for the fabric and this will depend upon the size and form of the sample, the type of the material and the external condition. And sometimes the previous condition of the sample is also important because if the fabric contains impurities or if it is not scoured or bleached for example in cotton then automatically amount of moisture taken up in this condition would be lesser than when the fabric is, is processed and the impurities are removed. One of the reason why we require to have a controlled condition when the fabrics are being tested because the properties vary with the moisture content. So a standard temperature of 25 degrees plus or minus 2 and an RH of 65 percent plus or minus 2 percent is always the standard condition at which the textiles can be tested. And here the amount of moisture in a sample can be expressed in two terms one is the regain or the moisture content. Regain is the weight of the water in a material expressed as percentage of the oven dry material and moisture content is the weight of water in a material expressed as percentage of the total weight. Now suppose if the oven dry material is denoted by D and the weight of the water would be W and the regain R and the moisture content M is obtained by taking the weight of water divided by the total weight of the material into 100 and moisture regain would be weight of water by oven dry weight of the material into 100. And here we have to be very careful about the temperature that is used in the oven where it has to be 105 degrees plus or minus 3 degrees temperature and the time has to be a very slow because the amount of moisture present in the textile material has to be dried very slowly and almost 2 hours time is required to remove the material. So under these two conditions we can get a proper result of moisture content and moisture regain. And coming to the measurement of regain, there are various techniques of measuring this and this is supposed to be a very critical factor because elimination of water from the sample is very essential and at the same time the sample should not be degraded that is the properties of the fabric should not be affected. So there are various methods like the gravimetric method by the oven dry method which is a direct method and we also have the 
electrical methods. Now coming to the gravimetrical method, it is a very simple method where the sample is first weighed, it is dried and reweighed again. But for this we require some weighing bottles. So, the first the weighing bottle has to be dried and then we require to cool it in a desiccator and then we have to get a proper weight of the bottle. After the weight is obtained, we have to place a material which we are going to test further regain and then the bottle is closed in such a way that the lid is half open and then it is put into an oven for the required time and it is dried. Now before removing from the oven, the bottle has to be covered fully, then the bottle has to be cooled in a desiccator and finally the weight has to be taken. Now if the oven weight of the material is D and the weight of the water in the material is W, the moisture regain would be W by D into 100 and moisture content would be W by W plus D into 100. Now, the in the gravimetric method, there is one difficulty, there is no problem with the first weighing of the bottle because it is in a dry condition, but the second weighing wherein we weigh the material along with the sample. So, there should not be any change in the material and so the moisture regain will be very easy for the material to take up once from the dry condition it comes to an ordinary atmosphere. So, the accuracy would be drying it very slowly and the oven temperature should be 105 degrees centigrade and while transferring the bottle from the oven to the desiccator and from the desiccator to the balance, one has to be very careful about the moisture regain the fabric would take up. Now, the second method is the oven dry method. This is an advanced method over the uh, basic method of gravimetric where it is generally used for the commercial processing and the routine testing and where we want a speedy determination of the content, moisture content and the accuracy. In this, there is an oven which has a balance on the top with one pan into the oven which has a mesh container on which the sample can be placed that is without disturbing the material content, you can heat the sample, cool the sample at the same time take the weight of the sample. So, there is a continual flow of air at the current relative humidity and this is based on the assumption that the air that is drawn into the oven is at the standard atmospheric condition. So, very uh, accurately the measurement can be done with this. Then we have the electrical method where we know that the electrical properties change along with the moisture content in the fabric. So, measuring the resistance or capacitance will give indirectly the method of regain. Here there is a speed and ease of reading the values, but thing is the instrument that is being used for these regain properties have to be always calibrated because you have to get an accurate measurement. So, in this instrument we see that there are two electrodes that can be used to probe or you can call them as probes which can be used to push them into the package of yarn and there are different probes in fact wherein different packages of material is present. So, for each of these one should understand the different type of probe that can be used. So, when probes are introduced into the package of yarn, the resistance between the electrodes is measured by the suitable electronics and the instrument has to be calibrated for the type of probe, the type of fiber and the expected regain range every time it is being used. Now, coming to the material where it has to have some dimensional stability. Dimensional stability is after the fabric is made and it has been converted into a garment or even as such the fabric, when it is subjected to use and care, it should not lose its dimensions. So, there should be some dimensional stability in textiles. So, this is a measure of the extent to which fabric keeps its original dimensions even after use and care. Generally, there are major types of shrinkage when they are subject to moisture and subjected to heat also. There are three types of shrinkages generally we come across in the fabrics. One is the relaxation shrinkage, the next one is the progressive and the third is the thermal shrinkage. Relaxation shrinkage is supposed to be an irreversible dimensional change. The relaxation will be done to the yarns or the yarns would relax once it is removed from the loom and then it is first used and care. So, that means there are certain stresses that are imposed when the weaving is done or even the knitting of the fabric is done. So, when during washing 
or dry cleaning or steam processing these stresses are released and so thereby there is some shrinkage that is seen and this shrinkage would remain as such throughout the usage of the fabric or the life of the fabric. It occurs only in the first care cycle itself that we call it as a relaxation shrinkage. And then we have a progressive shrinkage where the dimensional change keeps changing throughout the successive washings. And the third variety of the thermal shrinkage is mostly found in thermoplastic fibers and the fabrics where when they are subjected to heat the molecules in the fibers will move and assume a non-linear form or a random form. So, that is how we see the thermal shrinkage in the thermoplastic fibers. So, here they will shorten the fibers, the fabric shrink and sometimes it also alters the shape. So, there are certain factors which will control the shrinkage in the textile material. The first one is the construction of the material. As the tighter the construction, there is a reduction in the shrinkage. And coming to yarn twist, when the optimum amount of twist is given, it would control the shrinkage. And plain weave, jersey knit, all these are more resistant to shrinkage because in plain weave, we can see that there are more number of interlacings. And tension during sewing of garments, uneven or too much of tension, differential shrinkage, puckering in the seams, everything is visible because of it when sewing is not being done at a proper tension and stability of fibers and yarns where improper stabilization is given to the fibers or the fabric then we can see excessive shrinkage especially in blends where synthetic fiber shrinks different to that of a, an ordinary cellulosic fiber or an animal fiber. Now, how do we test this dimensional stability? So, there are some British standards wherein the sample size is being devised or defined by them where for critical work we are supposed to have a sample of 500 mm into 500 mm for routine work we can have a sample of 300 mm into 300 mm but when we are cutting a sample we should see that it is 5 centimeters away from the edge of the sample now coming to the marking of sample there is a procedure to mark the sample there are some templates uh, which can be used on the sample the first the fabric is placed flat without any tension the templates is placed on the fabric and the edges of the sample are drawn with a, a marking pen or fabric marking pen and one should see that there is no rounded edges that are marked. And there are three sets of marks that are done in the warp direction and the weft direction with 300 mm apart and of course, 50 mm away from the edges. In case of knitted fabrics, the fabric is first folded and the free edges are sewn together and then the marking has to be done. And if the fabric sample is very small, then we have to make the markings in such a way they are 250 mm apart and 25 mm from the edge. Before even marking, the samples are first conditioned and then after marking, the fabrics are subjected to the type of treatment and the procedure and then it has to be measured later. That means, after processing it either depending upon the type of washing again it has to be reconditioned and then you have to measure them out. After the test is been conducted, we have to again dry them, condition them and then measure the differences whether there is a shrinkage or there is an excessive shrinkage seen in the fabrics. Now, the factors that would affect the dimensional stability is the washing and the drying conditions. So, the water temperature, agitation speed is to be specified because we have to get a reproducible results. For this AATCC and the ASTM, these people have developed a standard set of laundering conditions. So, these conditions would be specified what would be the temperature of water, what type of wetting agent has to be used, at what temperature it has to be rinsed and what temperature and how the drying has to be done. And sometimes to simulate the home laundering, some dummy fabric is also added or some ballast is added to make a full wash load for the samples. And even the drying of samples also would play a lot of influence on the dimensional stability. Either you dry them flat on the floor, you dry them on the line. So, these aspects have been defined by the ASTM and AATCC. So, these have to be very carefully followed while the test for shrinkage has to be done. So, for dimensional stage, 
we require the standard detergent, specific temperature of water, the mechanical action and the drying temperature as well. Now, there is one like relaxation shrinkage is generally done where the fabric is put into cold water immersion, here stains in the fabric. So, as explained earlier relaxation shrinkage is done or it happens only in the first care cycle. So, for this we have to soak the fabric in cold water and then we have to keep the fabric between glass surface and then hold it flat and then we have to measure. And even for this the fabric has to be conditioned and then soaked in water for 2 hours with 15 to 20 degrees temperature with 0.5 grams per liter of a wetting agent and then we have to wash it again keep it flat, dry it, condition it and again recheck the dimensions. So, there are some specific scales that are now available with the uh, shrinkage testers that are now into the market. So, with that we can directly calculate the percentage of shrinkage. Otherwise, when we know the original measurement and the final measurement, we can uh, come across the relaxation shrinkage by using the mm, final measurement and the original measurement and take the percentage. And generally, we have to show the shrinkage as a negative number. So, woven fabrics have defects like bow and skew, which may lead to lots of problems in the assembly and especially the aesthetics of the garments. So, this may be due to the faulty weaving, faulty finishing. So, if one can understand this problem, then it can be rectified at that place, so that the garments would never lose their aesthetics. Another problem is the moisture in textiles, especially with the hydrophilic fibers. So, wherever there is an absorption, there is always a physical, mechanical and electrical properties that are related to it. So, by measuring the defects and the moisture, it would help both the customer and the manufacturer to act accordingly in the processing of the garments.